Today we're building a rainwater garden. You need to have the luxury of space because not everyone has a lot where they can build sufficient rain gardens to collect the rainwater from the roofs, especially in urban settings. The plan for today is uh, mark off the area where the rain garden will go, the outside perimeter. Afterwards, we start uh, digging in roughly half a meter in and dig out the depth of the garden, so mm -hmm. 30 centimeters deep. When we dig up the soil, we put the soil on the tarp and then we have to clean the soil from all the rocks and debris and uh, turn it into more uh, usable soil for the garden. Mm -hmm. So it has to be free of rocks. So who wants to uh, hey, take this and go all the way to the corner where that pipe is? So and we need to get 13 and a half meters. Add to the pipe. Sur la descente. Comme ah, the soil, no? And you can actually you can put it under the tree. Under the tree oh, and the tu descends toi en bas. So I would say roughly around here. Yeah. That could be some small. And I'll go like this. So let's uh Okay. I need the... Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, we can put one in here. Is there an outlet? It's okay. It's okay. I'm hold on that. It's okay. So if we look at this right now, what we have is the outside perimeter. However, when we start digging, we move 30 centimeters in, yeah. 30 yeah. centimeters yeah. from there, 30 centimeters from there, 30. And then the inside of the garden is going to be 3 meters. Yeah. Next, we need to measure this area around here because here it curves because it's oval. It starts yeah. going like this. <laughs> and so now from here, we need to measure where's the... Um, is since we have uh, these points here what we can do is do another 180 here yeah. 180 here 180 here yeah. and we then we connect with spray paint it has to be fully precise mm -hmm. as long as uh, we have like let's yeah, say 180 we, we here from here and we, uh, we take one meter uh, 80 yeah exactly <laughs> So this is the outside perimeter. So yeah, those are the next steps. So let's start digging. C'est bon, qui veut creuser? Ça, je pense que oui, faut commencer. Ça dépend ce qu'il va y avoir en fait. Ça me semble parfait. Ça c'est tout. Je pense que le and there's a couple of roots in here. 30 centimeters. What? Oh my god. I want to spade. The current uh, climate change debate and uh, in terms of mainstream solutions in climate change, it uh, supports two key features which are important for the hydrological cycle to function. One is evapotranspiration, where when you collect rainwater, it needs to evaporate and uh, it refuels a small water cycle. A second important feature of uh, the natural cycle is infiltration, where we need to have water to infiltrate into the ground to refill groundwater sources. So I think these are the key components of rainwater gardens and any other uh, green, so-called green solutions in urban settings. Yeah, I think so.
It's a normal city, are full covered with uh, this surface. Who not? It's not able to infiltrate the rainwater. We channelize it everything out of the city, and for this, the city are very dry, and we don't have a water to evaporate in this area. So we need to catch all rainwater coming down to the earth, not channelize. We need to keep it uh, in uh, the local area where to fall down because we need to more evaporate water and infiltrate to the soil because uh, we need to pump small water cycle with this water. If we channelize it, it's going to the sea, to the rivers, and it pumps large water cycle and it makes uh, this extreme weather. Naturally, this is a similar feature to any garden where you have a garden with plants, flowers and so forth. The key difference is, is that instead of uh, using water from the tap or the water from the school, you collect rainwater and you divert the rain gutter into the garden here that we're building. So the garden is going to be fueled by rainwater instead of water from the system. It's a lot more efficient and effective. A toto je jeden z projektov, ktoré, ktorý je naozaj jedinečný pre mesto Košice a vôbec pre základné školy, takže preto sme ho veľmi radi prijali. Aj takýmto spôsobom môžeme vzdelávať deti, ako chrániť alebo ako využiť dažďovú vodu. Vo vyučovaní majú žiaci zaradený aj predmet technika, počas ktorého pracujú s pôdou, môžu obrábať pozemky, ktoré máme v školskom areáli a teda veríme, že spoločne s učiteľmi budú zveľaďovať aj túto dažďovú záhradu. Teda ak tam budú niektoré rastlinky alebo kvietky, ktoré treba polievať, respektíve nejakým spôsobom ich obmieniať alebo opatrovať, tak verím, že to takto budú robiť práve počas tohto predmetu. Ale ja jednoducho rád experimentujem a toto beriem ako experiment a verím, že bude úspešný a atraktívny pre celé mesto Košice, že sa tu budú chodiť pozerať nielen deti z iných škôl, ale aj obyvateľia z tejto mestskej časti a z mesta Košice. V podstate snažíme sa pomôcť tomu, aby sme ovplyvnili alebo trošku zmiernili dopady klimatickej zmeny na životné prostredie budovaním takýchto dažďových záhrad, ktoré v podstate zadržiavajú dažďovú vodu v prírodzenom prostredí. Nie, 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 tá voda neodchádza preč z prostredia a v podstate pomáha to ovplyvňovať aj mikroklímu v blízkom okolí danej dažďovej záhrady. Takže my sme tu dobrovoľne, naša fakulta spolupracuje s Košickým samozprávnym krajom na projekte zadržiavania vody vlastne v, okolí, v, v krajine. Tak. The biggest problem in our region is that uh, we don't catch up rainwater enough and uh, we need to catch this water in our, our trees, our lands, our schools, our buildings, our uh, roofs. And well, right now we are here and we are building small lakes which should uh, catch water in, uh, in this garden, school garden. And uh, it's the uh, best example of, uh, to show our children how we manage our water. <laughs> The very important thing in, uh, in this uh, changing mind in uh, our region and our country and our world is uh, to have uh, stakeholders uh, and these stakeholders are uh, regional governments, local governments, national governments, uh, citizens and uh, experts from this area and uh, coordination between these uh, stakeholders. Another wonderful advantage of working together as a community is when we build something together, then it belongs to us. Forever it is ours, we will look after it, we know what went into it, we know how much uh, 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 effort went into it, how, what, what work we did. So then it is ours. And of course, when it is ours, we will look after it. Uh -huh.
The experiencing of it tells us what needs to happen. If we sit in rooms where we are making a decision without experiencing this, then it's harder to imagine how much goes in to build even a small rain garden like this. So uh, I would say that everybody who takes decisions for the community should do some community work and then take the decision. Because when you take the decision with experience, then it is the right decision for the community um, and, and, and for the planet and for your entire um, area and region. Now this concept of rain gardens where you dig and create a garden which allows the water, the rain water, we capture the rain water and allow it to go into the ground rather than in a concrete cement drain to go away and wash away to the sea is applicable globally. Wherever there are cities, wherever there are towns, as we know, the ground becomes drier and drier and when the water falls, some of it will get absorbed in the ground but a lot of it will get washed away in the concrete drains. So if we build rain gardens in our schools, in our building complexes, in our houses, in our car parks, all that water then gets captured, the small water cycle gets revived and we will face a much more healthier climate than these extremes of flood and drought. So I would say this is applicable to communities across the world.